Okay, so we move forward with geometric random variable. Uh, again, in order to explain the geometric random variable, we need to understand the Bernoulli random variable perfectly. Now, suppose that we have independent Bernoulli trials, each having a success probability that is defined between zero and one. These are performed until the first success occurs. So obviously, in real life, you will have some kind of situations. I mean, you repeat the same experiment, random experiment, until you achieve a success. I mean, for example, we are taking a course, and if we fail it, we are retaking it again and again until we pass it. So the number of trials that we perform until we observe our first success is going to be defined as a geometric random variable. So imagine this situation, you are tossing a die every time, and you are going to stop whenever you toss a six, okay? So it is possible that you can toss uh, a six in your first trial, but it may take some time. It may also uh, take some time to observe your first six. Uh, so uh, you see the geometric random variable here can take values between one and all integers until infinity. So uh, we need to calculate the probability of having our first success on the X trial. Let's just say, what is the probability of your observing first or observing uh, your first success in the X trial? So what does that mean? If your first success is going to happen in the X trial, this means first X minus one trials must end up with failures. Therefore, the first X, one, X minus one trials should have end up with failures with probability one minus p to the power x minus one. Again, we are assuming independence between these Bernoulli trials. Therefore, having uh, x minus one failures consecutively has the probability of, of one minus p to the power x minus one. However, because the x trial is going to end up with success, the last trial, it is going to end up with a success with probability p. Therefore, this P comes for the success in the X trial and in the first X minus one trials, we are going to have failures. This probability is going to calculate having the first success on the X trial. Remember now, we do not have a coefficient in front of this probability as we had in the binomial random variable because the X trial must end up with success and all of them are going to be failures, and this is going to come only in a single permutation. So first x minus one must be a failure, and, and the last must be a success. So we say that random variable x here denotes the number of trials required to be performed until observing the first success. Then the probability mass function of this geometric random variable is defined for all positive integers. So what is the number of trials that you need to perform until you observe a success? The number is at least one, but at most theoretically, it may be any integer number until infinity. And the probability of having your first success in your first trial is simply P, whereas for other values, the probability of having your first success in the X trial is P times one minus P to the power X minus one. So the probability mass function is only defined for positive integer values. This means the geometric random variable can take positive integer values only. And for everywhere else, the probability mass function yields a zero, okay? And the parameter here is again the success probability. So by changing the success probability of a Bernoulli experiment, we get to define different geometric random variables here. We say the success probability is the parameter of the geometric random variable. And we express this fact as X being geometrically distributed with success probability P. Now, uh, we need to show that all these probability mass values from 
value to one to infinity for all integers, all these probability mass values should sum up to one. So is that true that this is a probability mass function? Remember the one property about probability mass functions is that for positive probability masses, the summation should sum up to one. So uh, we replace one minus P with Q. Why? Because for uh, the sake of easiness in computation. So in the end of the calculation, we are going to replace Q with again one minus P. So at this point, we say that Q is equal to Y not minus P. Therefore, P plus Q is equal to one. And we replace one minus P here with Q. P times Q to the power X minus one. Here, the P, P here is a common multiplier in the in all terms in the summation, so P can get out of the summation. And for from for all integers from one to infinity, we can explicitly write this summation. When X is equal to one, it is simply going to be Q to the power zero, therefore one. Then when X is equal to two, it is going to be Q. When X is equal to three, that is going to be Q to the power three, two, so and so forth. And let's just call that this, summation of infinitely many terms, however, uncountably many terms, uh, sorry, countably many terms, is going to be A, okay? So, and here at this point for this part, we can see that here, except one, in every term, there is at least one Q, which can be used as a common multiplier. So we can take this part, into a Q parenthesis, and you can easily see that after taking this common multiplier out, the above sequence is going to repeat itself here, okay? So you see it is going to be equal to P times one plus Q parenthesis, the above sequence. So which means here A is equal to one plus Q times A. Okay, so we can solve for A then. So A must be equal to one plus QA. And from this equation, if we pull A on one side, we are going to get one over one minus Q, which is going to be one over P because remember Q was defined as one minus P. Therefore, this part A is equal to one over P. And when you multiply P with one over P, you can see that this summation is going to be one. So we can say that the probability mass function of the geometric random variable satisfies the conditions of being a probability mass function. Now let us solve a question about the geometric random variable. The probability that a student pilot passes the written test for his private pilot's license at any try is 0 0.7 independently. So every time this pilot candidate enters the exam, there is a 70% chance of being successful, being passing the test. However, at each time, this probability is the same. I mean, this pilot is not the candidate pilot, is not learning from the previous exams. Every time, the chances are the same, 0 0.70. And every time, the exam is going to be different and the uh, exam is the results of the exam are going to be independent from each other. So it says find the probability that a person passes the test on the third try. So what is the probability that this candidate passes the test exactly on the third try? Not before, not after. So this means in the first two tests, this pilot is going to fail. And in the third test, this pilot is going to pass. What is the probability that the person passes the test before the fourth try means this person can pass the test either in the first trial, first exam, or in the second exam, or in the third exam, but it must be before the fourth. So here we need to calculate three probabilities. So let's look at questions. First of all, the number of tests that the student pilots needs to take until passing the exam is a geometric random variable with success probability P 
success probability P being equal to 0 0.7 every time this person takes the test. And the probability of this person to pass the test in the third trial, third try, is equal to 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 to the power 2. So for the first two tests, there should be a fail. And the last time, the third time, the person must pass the test. So this probability is 0 0.063. So you see here we are using the probability mass function, p times 1 minus p to the power 2, as the uh, as to solve the question. So the student can pass the exam either in the first, the second, or the third try if we are being asked the probability of the person to uh, pass the test before the fourth try. Okay, we have three options. So this student can pass the test in the first or the second or the third trial. So all these three probabilities are disjoint from each other. The probability of passing the test in the first trial is 0 0.7, whereas the probability of passing it in the second try is 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, because in the first trial there should be a fail, and in the second trial there should be a pass. And the probability of passing the exam in the third trial is 0 0.3 to the power 2 times 0 0.7, as we have explained it here. So we have three probabilities, 0 0.70 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 0.063, and the summation will give you a 0 0.973. So this means what? For a person to pass the test before the fourth try is 0 0.97. It's a very large probability. Now so let's move forward and try to compute the expected value of a geometric random variable. Suppose we have a geometric random variable with any success probability p as long as p is defined between 0 and 1. Okay, otherwise, otherwise if you choose another value uh, which is not in the unit interval, then uh, the probability mass function will not conform to properties of a probability being a probability mass function. So remember, the success probability, just like all probabilities, must be defined between 0 and 1. And here, the expected value for this geometric random variable must be equal to 1 over p. Actually, this is logical. I mean, this means what? Uh, if uh, you are going to repeat an experiment until the first success, and the success occurs with probability p every time. The average number of trials that you are going to perform is going to be 1 over p. For example, uh, you are going to flip a coin until you observe a head. Okay? So the probability of having a head in any coin flip is 0 0.5, which means the number of coin flips that you need to perform until observing a head on the average must be equal to 1 over 0 0.5. That is equal to 2. Or if you toss a die until you get a 6, the number of trials that you need to perform on the average is going to be equal to 1 over 1 over 6. That is going to be equal to 6. So how this works, we are going to calculate the theoretical expectation by using the expectation formula. So for all potential values that the geometric random variable can take from 1 to infinity, we are going to multiply these values with the respective probability mass values. And in order to compute this summation, we are going to do a fifth trick. Again, we are going to replace 1 minus p with q for the, the sake of easiness in computation. And, and the p here, it's a common multiplier in every term that is summed up here. So we can take this p out of the summation as a common multiplier. And we are going to come with this form, x times q to the power x minus 1. Now, what you see here is somehow a derivative of a polynomial. OK, so if you consider q to the power x, and if you take the first derivative of q to the power x with respect to q, you are going to get this form. So this is, this part, this formulation, is the first derivative of q to the power x with respect to q. 
So this change is going to be very helpful for our computations. Now, if we can express this as a first derivative of q to the power x of, uh, with respect to q, then we are going to su be summing up the first derivatives of functions with respect to q. And we know that the summation of the derivatives will always be equal to derivative of the summation. So we can interchange the places of this derivation, okay, differentiation operation and the summation. And the summation can get into the differentiation operation. So this time we are going to sum up q to the power x as x changes from one to infinity. After summing all these up, then we are going to take the, the first derivative. And the sum here as one, q to the power x, the, as x changes from one to infinity, can also be calculated with the previous approach. We can easily say that q is a common multiply because it exists in every term here. We can take it out. And this summation of this series is going to be equal to Q times one plus the summation of the same series. And again, we can solve for the summation of this series and we can get it as Q to the Q over one minus Q, okay? So now we are going to take the first derivative of this summation, Q over one minus Q. Remember now, how do we take the first derivative of a ratio? We take the first derivative of the term in the numerator, then multiply it with the term in the denominator. We write a minus sign, and we take the first derivative of the denominator and multiply it with the term in the numerator, and we write it here. Then we divide this to the second power of the denominator. And or if you make these operations, if you calculate, you are going to see that the numerator is going to be simply equal to one. So one over one minus Q square is going to be one over uh, one minus Q is going to be equal to P, one over P square. Now, expectation X, if you remember, there was a P term here. So we take the first derivative of this part to calculate, but there was a p term here. So if you multiply p with one over p square, you are going to get one over p. So the expected value of a geometric random variable is one over p. And how do we compute the variance of a geometric random variable? Again, we can use the same approaches. Remember the convenient formula for the variance is expected value of x square minus square of the expectation, which is one minus p over p square. However, the, for computation of it, first we need to show that expected value of x square is equal to two minus p over p square. So you can check the question two in problem session five file to see that this summation, the expected value of x square is exactly equal to this formulation. And after plugging in this value here and right here, the square of the expectation, you are going to get the variance to be equal to one minus P over P square. Okay, so we leave this part to be examined by the students. Okay, let's solve a question about geometric random variable. Some biology students were checking the eye color for a large number of fruit flies. And for an individual fly, suppose that the probability of white eyes is 0 0.25 and the probability of red eyes is 0 0.75 and that we may treat these files as independent trials, okay? So you can see that white eyes is uh, obtained from a recessive gene, which has a probability of 0 0.25 and red eyes is uh, obtained by a dominant gene with probability 0 0.75, okay? So every time we choose a fruit fly, every time we choose a fruit fly, uh, the chances of being it with born with white eyes is 0 0.25, okay? So uh, we are going to choose a white-eyed fly until, uh, actually we are going to select these flies, fruit flies, until we obtain a white-eyed fly. 
So the question asks us is, the first fly with the white eyes is going to be the third fly that is checked. So what is the probability of this event? What is the probability that the first fly with white eyes is the third fly that is checked? So we can obviously solve this question by assuming the number of flies that we need to check until we get a white-eyed fly as a geometric random field. So getting a white-eyed fly is a success, and the first success to occur in the third trial has a probability that can be computed by the probability mass function of a geometric random variable. For the remaining part, let's read the questions. What is the probability that at most three flies have to be checked for eye color to be able to observe a white-eyed fly? So what is the probability that we find a white-eyed fly before the fourth trial? So the question is asking this. So it is either going to be in the third trial or the second trial or the third trial, but less than four number, uh, less than four flies need to be checked in order to get white-eyed fly. And for part C, we say what is the probability that at least three flies have to be checked for eye color to observe a white-eyed fly? And we are going to calculate the expected number of flies we need to check until we observe a white eye fly. So you can answer this part. The expected number of flies we need to check until a white eyed fly is obviously going to be 1 over p, the expected value of geometric random variable, and the success probability here is 0 0.25. Therefore, the expected number of flies that we need to check until we get a white eyed fly is simply 1 over 0 0.25 that is equal to four. And the variance of the number of flies we need to check until we observe a white eye fly, again, can be computed by the variance formula of the geometric random variable. So the number of flies we need to check until we observe a white eye fly, until we observe a success, is going to be a geometric random variable where the success in each check is going to be equal to we have the probability of 0 0.25. And part A asks, what is the probability of checking exactly three flies to get a white-eyed fly? This means the first two of them is going to end up with uh, failure, and the last one will end up with success. So as you can realize, there is a misprint here. So x being equal to 3. In order to write the probability mass function here, we need to write 2 here. So we are going to change that. So this two, 3 must be equal to 2. And as you can see, it is corrected here. 1 over 4 times 3 over 4 to the power 2. So again, this is a mistake. So the probability of observing your first white fly exactly in the third trial is going to be 9 over 64. So the probability of checking at least three flies to get a white-eyed fly consists of three possible events. You either find your first white-eyed fly in the first trial or in the second trial or in the third trial. And all of these probabilities can be computed by the probability mass function of the geometric random variable. And we can calculate this probability to be equal to 148 over 256. The, the probability of checking at least three flies to get a white-eyed fly means the probability of observing your first success at least in the third trial. So x is going to be at least three. Okay, so one minus probability of of x being equal to 1 and x being equal to 2 will help us to calculate this probability. We can calculate this probability, x being greater than or equal to 2, by subtracting the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 from 1. So if we sum, subtract these two probabilities, you are going to get the remaining probability. And these two probabilities are calculated as p and p times 1 minus p. And that is going to be equal to 9 over 16. The expected value of a geometric random variable is 1 over p. In this case, p is 0 0.25. So it is going to be equal to 4. And the variance is going to be equal to 
1 minus p over p square. And if we plug p values in here, you are going to get a variance that is equal to 12. So you see, if you get a smaller success probability, then the expected number of trials until you are going until you get a success is going to be quite large. And the variance is also going to be quite large because in that case, one minus P is going to be almost one okay, for a small P. And here, P square is going to be a very, very small value and the variance is going to be quite large if we take a smaller key value. 